Welcome to another episode of Stay Paid. Today we have a really fun guest, man. We got to meet this guy a little bit ago and then we got to bring him on the interview and had a lot of fun uh, talking to him, picking his brain. I he's explained super... on the interview, like he is just a personality that's just like you be, you feel like your best friends yeah. with him immediately. When yeah, you his name is him. Kevin Scanlon. He is out of Texas, right? He's all city agents is his all city real estate. Sorry is his real estate company. Yeah. He really kind of goes into details of the model that he's built with this and then how he sort of built this this model for all city real estate agents in Texas. Yeah, it's completely different. Like he walks through on this interview, his model, which is completely different than the big brands, yeah. even, even different than some of the virtual brands that are out there like EXP. So I even ask him the question, I'm excited for you guys to hear the discussion. I ask him, are big brands relevant anymore? Yeah. Like are the Keller Williams, the Century 21s that have been around in real estate, but apply this to any industry, are big brands, are they relevant? Do they matter? And we have a good discussion on that. Yeah. And then after that, he really gets into this idea of wanting to become or how you need to become a listing focused agent. Really, that's kind of where everything is going and kind of shares his ideas on how he's trained his agents to do that and then takes you through this. So really excited for this interview. Make sure to stick around. In the meantime, we've got this week's featured review coming from Shamai Realtor from Rockland, California via Apple. Apple podcast. They say motivational podcast, five stars. I love listening to your podcast. My morning routine while I drink my first cup of coffee <laughs> gets me motivated every day. Very helpful tips. I even changed my tagline on my LinkedIn after hearing one of your podcasts. So that would have came from the that. Jimmy Coleman yep. episode. And I like the idea of micro famous, which came from the Matt Johnson episode. So uh, Shane I says, thank you. Thank you so much for leaving your review. We would love it if you take a minute to subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts if you're not already and leave a review uh, yourself just to let us know how we're doing. And without further ado, here's the episode. From Reminder Media, this is Stay Paid, a sales and marketing podcast on a mission to help you close more deals and retain more business. Hosted by the VP of Marketing, Josh Steik, and Reminder Media's president, Luke Akery. So get ready to hear the golden nuggets that will allow you to live a life of freedom tomorrow, but only if you take action today. Kevin, welcome to Stay Paid. Hey, thank you guys so much for having me today. I really appreciate it. It's quite an honor to be on the number 12 podcast in the world. <laughs> we jumped up a few. Podcast. We actually I hit number that. six today. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I couldn't believe it. You guys, I, it's, it's not surprising to me based on the short time that I've known you guys. I can tell that you're my kind of people and you're absolute dynamos. So I really appreciate you. Thank you, man. I really appreciate you saying that. I'm excited to interview you. Like I said, man, there's just the synergy there, but I want to tell you guys, about Kevin before he introduces himself. Because this is like Kevin, I mean, his company has sold over a billion, right, in real estate just last year, you were saying. Yeah. Right, so that's with a B. So obviously great at business, great at recruiting. We're going to get all into that. But here's what it boils down to. Life is about relationships. Life's about making an impact, right? Kevin, we just meet. He finds out. We had to reschedule a call. He finds out I had to reschedule because, oh, it was this. We had to reschedule this, this podcast. podcast. Yeah, 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 that's what it was. You. Oh, because I had little Evelyn. So yeah. everybody who's been following her along with me on social and everything knows I had my first little kid, uh, my little girl, Evelyn. And Kevin reaches out to me, texts me, gets my home address and sends me a gift for Evelyn. I mean, Kevin, and I've only met one time on the phone and he's <laughs> already doing that. Every business person listening to this right now, take note. Like, that's really what it comes down to because when you make that type of impact with somebody, they become an advocate for you. Yeah. They become a raving fan. They get drawn to you. And it's not about the gift. Right. It's about the thought. Yep. And that, and so I just wanted to share that. That gives you a flavor for this type of guy, man. And that's why he has a team of over 800 agents. And, you know, we're going to get into that. But, Kevin, thank you for being on the show. If you could just introduce yourself, like tell your story, you're, you're super successful right now, your company is growing, but give us a flavor of how you got into real estate and what you're doing. Sure. Um, and and let's, let's circle back to when I'm finished here uh, with my very short bio, let's circle back to what you mentioned just now about the, the act of, of giving a small gift, the act of coming from that place of abundance, because mm. that's a big theme in my life and in my business. So we'll circle back to that. Uh, as these guys said, my name is Kevin Scanlon. Uh, I was born in Denver, Colorado. I was adopted at birth. And two days after I was born, my 
My parents flew up to Denver, plucked me out of the arms of my 16-year-old unwed birth mother, hmm. and flew me back to Houston, and I grew up a Texas boy, f- except for those first two days. Wow. Uh, I, uh, I grew up in Houston. I graduated, like all real estate brokers, with a degree from the University of Texas in biology. Uh, after I graduated uh, with a degree in biology, I traveled the world. I taught at American schools all over the world, in Central America, in South America, and in Egypt, and uh, then came back to the United States and worked as a biologist for three years in Alaska, traveling all <laughs> around Alaska. Wow. Uh, yeah, back, so in, in, in late 1999, uh, it was time for my then wife and I to uh, come back to Texas, uh, settle down and, and start maybe buying a house and having a baby. But the problem with that notion was with only a bachelor's degree in biology, your earning potential is about 15 bucks an hour. <laughs> so you really have to have an advanced degree. Crazy. So I man- and I was the worst college student ever. <laughs> but I managed to finagle my way into graduate school. I studied for the GRE for four months and aced the GRE and managed to get into graduate school. And I did that for about three months and I absolutely hated it. Mm. And so I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And I had a friend who had become a real estate agent uh, a few years before that. He was a very close friend of mine, but this guy was an absolute goof. And at the time, he was making $50,000 a year. And that sounded like such an earth-shaking amount of money to me 21 Mm. years ago. And so I thought, well, if he can do it, I can do it. And so in May of 2000, I got my real estate license. I worked for the first 10 years of my career at Keller Williams Realty, actually the very first Keller Williams office that was ever, that was, that Gary Keller started uh, back in the early uh, 80s, 90s. I worked at the Southwest Market Center for Keller Williams as a producing agent for 10 years. That was back when Gary Keller actually used to still come into the office, believe it or not. (laughs) And, you know, for that 10 years, uh, I was a top producer and uh, I, I was, I was, I'm very big into, as I said earlier, coming from a place of abundance. So I taught classes there. I coached and, and mentored literally thousands and thousands of agents in my 21 years in the business and a ton of Keller Williams agents. Uh, Left Keller Williams in 2010 to go to a small brokerage where I could keep more of my money. Hmm. And after two years in production there, became the broker manager of that company uh, and then was fired for a really, really flimsy reason. Hmm. Uh, And lucky for me, that coincided with uh, a short time earlier, I had gotten a divorce. I lost my kids. The market had tanked. I had gone broke. I was living in a house that was about to be foreclosed on. Whew. And I would occasionally, when I had zero dollars, literally at all to my name, go up to the office where I worked and steal lean cuisines out of the office freezer <laughs> for food. And You know, I was at rock bottom and it was a chasm from which I was very unlikely to emerge. Uh, I I was on the brink of homelessness, Mm. literally on the brink of homelessness. And, you know, I scratched and clawed, uh, put a deal together here and there. Uh, We would wake up at 5 a.m. and search Craigslist, Craigslist for construction jobs. And I would go out and work for 50 bucks a day, 12 hours on construction, off the books, 50 bucks, here's your, here's your money, just to buy gas and food. Uh, But I, I worked at it and I clawed and I scratched. And in 2014, my business partner and I put our last dime into all city real estate. And we started the company on October 14th of 2014. And every one that I knew told me that our model would not work, that it would not be sustainable. And we'll talk about the model here a a little bit uh, in a minute, Mm -hmm. but they told me that we wouldn't make enough money for the model to be sustainable and that I would be out of business in a year. Mm. And uh, here we are 
six years later, and to, today we signed on agent number 865. <laughs> and as you <laughs> mentioned at the top of the broadcast, yeah, seriously, that uh, we did $1.4 billion with a B last year. We transacted 4,500 transactions with our tiny crew of four that run this company. And we have a three word vision statement. It's not a paragraph, it's, it's, it's not a page long, it's three words. And this is our mantra that we've used to build and will continue to build this thing, this, this revolution that is a paradigm shift in the industry. And that vision statement is we empower agents. Mm. And everything that we do and say comes from that foundation. So that's really, that's really the elevator version if it was a very tall a uh, building in a long elevator ride of, of well, the elevators headed and, in the right direction, man. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Have you guys seen the meme going around the internet right now on Instagram for it, it's, it shows Tom Brady at Tampa Bay. And I'm, it, I don't know the exact wording, but it basically says it's proof that it's not the company that matters. It's the agent. Yeah. 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 I've seen that with, with all those photos. <laughs> because I he, he, he leaves mean, Patriots I, and goes win it and wins at Tampa Bay. I'm 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 so vain that I actually thought that my agent who sent it to me had made it up about my company. Oh, really? Started... <laughs> <laughs> well, when you said that we empower agents, it made me think of that meme. So, hey, there you go, man. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So so walk us through the model. Right. Because I am curious, like you're, you're you've grown to 865 or so agents. And I really want to focus on this idea of recruiting because I think a ton of people like leadership and recruiting, a ton of people who listen to this, we're all actively probably growing our businesses and a part of growing businesses is getting the right people. So can you walk us through the model and then talk a little bit of how you recruit agents? Yes, absolutely. Um, so the model is very simple. Uh, we charge our agents a monthly fee of $150 per month. That's a flat monthly fee. And un unless those agents choose to add on some of the other things that they, that they're, they can add on that we offer, uh, they're going to keep literally 100% of every commission that they earn for that $150 a month. There are no transaction fees. There are no admin fees tacked on. You will literally keep every dime of every commission that you earn for that $150 per month. And we last year, about a year and a half ago, uh, we we changed the model just a tiny bit because that one hundred and fifty per month used to also include your E and O, your errors and omission. But we grew so fast, and we had so many agents, and the E and O policy began skyrocketing because right. of our agent count the production that those agents do and the volume and the uh, number of transactions. Those are the three things that uh, e &O carriers use to charge the yearly e &O fee to the broker. And the reason that we, that we included e &O for those first five years in the 150 a month is because for all my years in the industry, and I didn't learn this until I had been in the business a couple of years, it always bothered me that brokers use errors and omission charges as a revenue stream without telling the agent that. So for instance, at one of the brokerage, brokerages I worked for, when I uh, closed a transaction, in addition to the 70-30 the commission split that I was on, I was charged a litany of fees and one of those was $80 per transaction for errors and omission. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? Errors and omission policies are not paid for on a per transaction basis from the broker to the carrier. They are paid for just like a homeowner's insurance policy once per year. As I said, based on dollar volume, agent count and transaction numbers. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, but being the nerd that I am, I broke it down. If you were to break it down per transaction, it works out depending on what brokerage and, and, and what part of the country, it works out to be somewhere between 17 and $23 per transaction. Hmm. So that big box broker that I worked for, for all of those years kept 
60 of my $80 that I was giving them as revenue. And I always found that disingenuous. And almost every broker in the country does that. And I didn't want to do that. We empower agents means that on every level, I'm going to open the books to you, Mr. or Miss Agent, who's considering coming on board. And I'll show you what our costs are. At $150 per month, yes, our margins are slim. So it is indeed about butts in the seats, recruiting agents, quality agents. We don't take new agents, right? So When you say don't take new agents, does that mean they have to have a certain amount of transactions? Correct. Okay. Well, either transactions or, or, or time in the business. I mean, we take it on a case-by-case -case basis, gotcha. right? Okay. I might take an agent who's only been in the business for six months, but in that six months, they did five transactions. And they seem super sharp. So anyway, a year and a half ago, it, it became no longer sustainable for us to include the E&O fee in, in the 150 a month. But I wanted to come up with a solution. And I just I went round and round in my head for a couple of months because I knew I had to do this. What would be fair to the average all city agent in terms of a fee for E&O? because we can't cover it anymore. Mm -hmm. And what I came up with is $100 a year for all the transactions you can eat, <laughs> whether you do two transactions like, a year. It's like Golden or, Corral. <laughs> that's exactly right, yes. Uh, it, whether you do two transactions per year or 30, you're only going to pay us an additional one, $100 per year. So $150 a month times 12 months is $1,800 plus 100 a year for E&O, our agents literally pay us less than $2,000 a year and they keep 100% of every commission. And for the years that I've been doing this in recruiting, I get a lot of pushback and actually agents get angry about it and they say, yeah, but for that, you're not gonna get any tools, you're not gonna get good support and so on. And so what's the catch, right? The, they believe that the catch is it's it's one fifty a month, one hundred percent commission, and that's a cloud what I was, of dust. I was just about to ask those questions. Yeah, yeah, cloud of dust. Yeah. But but the paradigm shift is this: for less than two thousand dollars a year, and I keep a hundred percent of every commission. My agents come to me after being with us for six months or a year, and they'll call me and they'll, and they'll ask a contract question, right? They have a question about contracts or compliance. I'll answer the question and they'll say to me, this happens weekly. They'll say to me, Kevin, I just want you to know that you actually changed my life because I'm taking that $20,000 a year that you're saving me and I'm actually putting that into my child's college fund. One of my agents called me last week and said in the four years she was, when she started All City, when her daughter was a freshman, her daughter graduated this last year and the, the money she saved paid for the entire ch education of that child. Wow. And so sure. I'll have agents call me and they'll say, you're saving me 20 grand a year. And oh, by the way, I get better broker support, better administrative support and better technological tools that your document flow is so easy and seamless with the systems that we've put together, all of those things are better than the guy I came from whom I paid $35,000 to last year. So do you think the That's traditional the brokerage model then is dying? Like, I mean, to get yeah. your opinion on it, right? Do you think the, you called it the big box, right? Brokerage. Do you think in your opinion that the brokerage is dying, the big box brokerage? I think big box brokerages are in huge trouble. And I'm going to give you an example of why you may agree when I'm done that, that 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 is the case. So when we started the company, we started it because we knew that given the ubiquitousness of information available to consumers, that consumers were shifting the landscape of the consumer to agent relationship right? That, that consumers now had so much information, whether it's home searches or statistical data, so much information at their fingertips that it threatens to erode the value proposition offered by real estate agents. Yeah. And as that dynamic began to change back in the late 
2000s, early 2010s, as that dynamic began to change, so began to change the dynamic between agent and broker. And what I mean by that is, as of 2014, when we started the company, agents didn't really need to go to the office of the broker anymore. That brick and mortar office that was 50,000 square feet, that was the, one of the big chunks of overhead that necessitated a broker taking 20 or 30 or $40,000 per year from every agent, that, that, that thing was, was dying a slow death. And your clients definitely don't want to go to your office. Back in 2014, they, they want to meet you at Starbucks. They want to meet you at the house that you're going to be yeah. showing them, right? That dynamic was changing. And so that began to erode the value proposition of the broker. Mm -hmm. So even though we have brick and mortar offices at All City Real Estate, we don't spend a lot of money on them and our agents are welcome to come there. But even before the pandemic, guess what? No one does. Well, no how, one can. how important and, then is the brand, right? Because, right, you know, like, because if the importance in the operation isn't there, right, and this is whole EXP's model too, right? It's all virtual. How important is the brand of a, a KW, of a Century 21, of an all city versus the agent's brand? What's your opinion there? I'm, I'm asking the, you know, the controversial questions that they write on Inman News all the time. <laughs> the, the answer to that question is it has zero importance mm. to the consumer with very few exceptions. Now, if you have a $2 million house and there's a boutique brokerage that specializes in high-end properties, like there are a couple of those here in Austin, that's different, right? But for the average consumer, for the average real estate agents, agent who sells their comfort zone for homes that they sell, for instance, here in Austin is going to be somewhere between 350 and 600, right? Yeah. 400 to 80, somewhere in that ballpark. For those consumers, for, for that seller, when I go to a listing appointment as an agent and I go and sit on that person's couch and they're blown away by my marketing program that I put together and they're blown, blown away by my knowledge of the market, both citywide and in that particular neighborhood, they're blown away by my marketing plan they don't care what brokerage you belong to. They're not hiring All City Real Estate or Coldwell Bank or Remax or Keller Williams. They are hi hiring Susie Smith who is sitting on their couch and blowing them away to a degree that outpaces all the other agents that they're interviewing and they're hiring her and they don't care whose brokerage she's, she's with. And so to that end, we empower agents our three word vision statement includes complete branding freedom for our agents. Hmm. If our agents have a brand, the ABC Realty Group, and they've been nurturing that brand for five or 10 years, or it's a brand new brand for them, and they have a beautiful fancy logo and, and, and they, their signs are gorgeous. Well, the Texas Real Estate Commission says that there are certain parameters that an agent must follow regarding advertising and, there's, and that the sponsoring broker's name, the company name yep. in this case, All City Real Estate must appear. And there are certain guidelines, restrictions about how big the name of that, that brokerage must be. Yep. But other than that, as long as it's compliant with the rules of the Texas Real Estate Commission, our agents are free to brand themselves however they like. That's awesome. And yeah. That is very appealing to an agent because it, it adds to the value proposition that we bring as a brokerage, which is we know it's not about us. We know that for a fact. We know it because we've, we've shown that to you by charging you less than $2,000 a year, by giving you unparalleled broker support, stellar admin support, document flow that is ridiculously seamless. And oh, by the way, complete branding freedom because we know your clients don't care yeah. about all city real estate or any other brokerage. <laughs> no, around. your clients care about your clients. Yeah, <laughs> that is. I totally agree with you. the The idea of the brand also speaks to that information, that access to information. You know, no longer people yep. have to put their trust 
in the big logo or the big branding. They're putting their trust in the experience and they're putting their trust in how often they're seeing you as an expert in their area or the person that's able to help them make the decision on this journey, whether that's through education yep. that you're providing through your content or the relationships that you're building with your clients. You see that's this right. also and in the corporate world. Um, I was going to say, it's like you're seeing now CEOs are being challenged to be the Gary V, the Grant Cardone, the, and why is that? Why does it, these big corporations are trying to get their CEOs out there? It's because people are wanting to do business not with a brand. They want to do business with a person. Mm -hmm. They want to get to know the people that they're doing business with. Yeah, that's right. And and it actually, let, let, let me go back and circle back to the question you asked me a little while ago about, do I believe that that the, the traditional big box broker model with a, with a split and, and fees, and you're paying them 20, 25, 30 grand a year are in trouble. And, and I'll just finish that thought by, by saying this. Uh, we knew when we started the company that this, we, well, you never know for sure. We thought this thing would probably work. <laughs> you gotta and, have that belief, baby. <laughs> yeah. And, and indeed, we started growing very quickly, and we have grown very quickly. We have a 44,000% a, a growth rate since the day I started the company. Mm. And what I'm here to tell you is that the, the, the gradual evolution of that changing agent-broker dynamic, we, we had a feeling when we started this company that should the market ever take a dip, should there be a ripple in the industry, we would not only survive that, that we would actually thrive. Because when that happens, an agent's income begins to notch down uh, because either the market dipped or some unforeseen circumstance, AKA a global pandemic. <laughs> uh, when that happened, when COVID happened, we had a feeling that we were going to again catch fire and that our recruiting numbers would jump. And indeed they did because when agents begin to make less money, they start watching their pennies more. Mm. And at that point we already had a footprint in the industry. And the reason that I believe that this spells doom for big box is this, those 50,000 square foot brick and mortar offices right now today are ghost towns. Mm. I drive by my old Keller Williams Southwest market center which for years and years was the highest producing real estate office in the world. Wow. And it's a, it's a behemoth of a mm. building, right? Yeah. It is Empty. a ghost town. There are four cars in the parking lot now. And what's happening is that's a dynamic that is not going to go back the other direction ever. It's not because what we've learned in the last year since this global pandemic and the subsequent lockdowns occurred is that, we don't really need to show up at work, right? We don't really need to go to the brick and mortar office in order to do our business well. And frankly, in many industries, and I believe real estate is one of them, we're more productive with the way that we've had to change over the last year, given these odd circumstances yep. that we're living through. So what that told me is we were correct in, in our hypothesis that the industry was changing and that that agent broker dynamic was changing. And the reason I believe big box is going to be in trouble unless they also evolve is because that $20,000, $30,000 chunk of money I'm having to give to my big box broker is for a value proposition that is no longer valuable in mm. today's world. That's as that That's is why as you see as I can put it. You see a lot of big uh, boxes, as you call them brokerages shifting to a huge huge investment in tech. Huge huge investment in in building out platforms to to help agents. Um, we're seeing the same in our own business of the virtual. We have about 280 employees. Everybody's virtual. We're seeing better numbers. Uh, productivity wise. So I, I think the world is shifting. Let's get to the tactics, right? So if there's managers and team leads and people trying to recruit right now, I'm curious, how do you recruit? Is it phone calls? Are you sending out mailers? Are you taking people for coffee? What are the actual tactics from a recruiting standpoint that you're using to try to get agents to come join All City? Well, I'll tell you, I, I, 
my business partner and I, uh, we own the company 50-50. He and I have made a lot of mistakes in our six years in the business. And um, we, don't, we don't beat ourselves up for our mistakes because we're, we're making this up as we go because this hasn't <laughs> been done on the level that we're doing it. And so we allow ourselves mistakes and we learn and we evolve from those mistakes. And one of the mistakes that I made very early on is the content of the videos that the, the videos that I made in order to recruit agents. So from the very beginning of All City Real Estate, I, be, I knew the power of video and that that was in, in 2014, that was in its infancy and that was only going to continue to grow the power of video when it comes to any type of marketing, whether it's me recruiting agents to my company or an agent uh, trying to generate business from their database yep. or it, a, a car salesman yep. going out on the lot and saying, look at this brand new Mercedes, right? Mm -hmm. the, the, the key to it is consistency. And so for me, the two things that I was doing, consistency in my message and the content of that message, one of those things I was doing it wrong for the first couple of years. The consistency part is this. From, from the very beginning of, the, of All City Real Estate, I sent out weekly video emails, emails with video content to 50,000 agents across the state of Texas. It's now 70,000 agents oh, wow. that I send these weekly emails to, okay? And the, the, I'm very consistent about that. And everybody in sales knows that reaching out and tickling your database, reaching out and touching people consistency, consistently is the number one way to achieve success, right? And so I was doing that. But in the beginning, when I say that my content was, was wrong, I say that because probably 80% of the emails that I sent to those 50,000 agents were straight up recruiting. This is how great all city is. Here's our model. Why are you paying somebody 20 grand? Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Yeah. Well, you can only say that a, a certain number of ways and a certain <laughs> number of times. times yeah. Right. And, and about 20% of those videos were educational where I would talk to those 50,000 agents about current contract ch changes uh, that the Texas Real Estate Commission was mandating, problems that I was seeing with my agents in terms of um, a misunderstanding of what a certain document is, right? Mistakes that I, would, that I would see. And what I started realizing was my open rate for the straight up recruiting videos on those emails typically was between six and 12%. Okay. My open rate for the educational videos was Shut astronomical up. in the world of open rates for emails. It hovered typically somewhere between 25 and 35%, which yeah, is a ridiculous awesome. number, right? Yeah. So what it made me think of was this. What do I want my brand to be? What do I want people to think of when they see this logo? I'm showing the guys this logo on the Zoom call that we're on of my company, that I'm on the hat that I'm wearing. When, when someone looks at the All City Real Estate logo, what pops into their head today? Mm. Cheap brokerage, 100% commit. I don't want that to be my brand. And so I went to my business. I had an epiphany one night at 3 o'clock in the morning because I never sleep. <laughs> and I, and I put together, I put together a little keynote presentation for my business partner on my iPad. And I showed him a couple of iconic logos. I showed him the Mercedes logo. And I said, tell me the one or two word thing that pops immediately into your head when you see these logos, Mercedes luxury, mm -hmm. right? I showed him the Apple logo, innovation, quality, right? Showed him several logos like that. And then I showed him the all city logo. He didn't have anything. So what I dreamed up was I want to come from a place of abundance for not just my agents, but for every agent. And I want my logo to connotate in every agent's mind in Texas, whether they're with all city or not education. So I shifted my focus from 80% recruiting and 20% education to 100% education. Yeah. For the last several years, every video that I send out, I don't 
ever, ever say, come learn more about all city real estate, come join us. And when you look at my YouTube channel, the bulk of the subscribers and the bulk of the messages coming from real estate agents are not all city agents. They're big box people who say, wow, this is great content. I, I'm having this issue right now. And you explained it perfectly. Well, guess what? Week after week, they're receiving these videos. Month after month, they're seeing them. And they start to go in their own head. They start to say, if I'm getting all of my education content from someone else, and oh, by the way, I did some digging and I get to keep 100% of every commission, why am I paying you 30 grand? And so the consistency piece obviously is important, but the content is important. And I would say for anyone who is in sales, it is just as, as applicable to your profession, whether you're a, a producing real estate agent, whether you sell solar panels, it doesn't matter because when you give someone knowledge and information, when you give anyone anything, even in my personal life, without the expectation of reciprocity, that is when you will truly cricket become the business person that you want to so be. Good, you man. guys are too young to know what cricket means. It's from this old show called Kung Fu. <laughs> no, Dude, that's spot so on. Good. I mean, spot yeah. on with the content and providing the education and building the trust from that standpoint. People will, and again, it goes back to the access to information. People will look into you. If they begin to trust you and they see you frequently and they're valuing what you're giving to them, they will they will do their research to find out what you're all about and what you could potentially what offer a, them. What a great exercise to take your logo and take these iconic logos. Take it to, Show like, it your, to your clients. Yeah, your clients, your friends. Right after the transaction. And literally go, what do you feel when you see this? What, what, do, you feel, what do you feel when you see my logo? I mean, what a great exercise. Yeah. Uh, it's just it's the whole principle of leading with value. If you lead with value, people are drawn to you. Why are agents failing, right? You have 800 agents. In 2021, what's your one or two top tips that you give to agents right now to, to help them not fail? The number one tip that I'm going to give for the, especially the latter part of 2021 and what we in Texas are experiencing probably to a greater degree than the rest of the country, but it's a problem in, with the rest of the country as well, is the lack of inventory, right? And the, the lack of inventory of homes for buyers to purchase is at a crisis level yep. in a lot of markets. And Austin is one of those markets, right? We're based in Austin, Texas, where greater Austin, which includes, you know, Round Rock and Pflugerville and down south, down to San Marcos, and it's a big, it's a big region with over 2 million people in it. And the number of homes on the Austin MLS as of this morning, active properties that you can buy was 799. Oh, okay. Geez. So, so what does that mean for an agent's productivity? What it means is there are fewer houses on the market and, there, and therefore you're going to make less money. It's, it's a categorical fact that mm -hmm. agents are going to make less money because there are fewer transactions being done because the inventory is so low. So what that means for agents right now in 2021 is if you are not shifting your model as a producing agent from 50-50 buyers, right? Usually you have over the years, you make, let's say you make $200,000 and you typically have 50% buyers and 50% sellers in any given year. If you stick to that model, you're going to make less than that $200,000. So how do I go from being either a buyer centric agent or a 50-50 buyers and sellers agent to a listing centric agent? I can give you a perfect example of how to do that. Go to ReminderMedia.com and sign up for your product. <laughs> now, I'm not kidding. I know, I, you know, I, listen. That's great. Checks in the mail, Kevin. Yeah, seriously. No. <laughs> it, that, that's one of the reasons I reached out to you. You didn't reach out to me. I reached out to you and said, I want to partner my entire brokerage 
with your company so that I can help to empower my agents. Am I going to make an extra dime off of it? No, because our agents keep 100% of every commission. But if I can empower my agents and strike a deal with you like I did, where our agents can, can buy your amazing product and send it to their database in the neighborhood that they farm, Cat Mountain was my neighborhood when I was in production, yep. and there are 800 homes there. Yep. And I sent snail mail newsletters, as we discussed a couple of weeks ago, to all 800 homes every month for yep. years and years and years. And I was the Cat Mountain expert, right? Yep. And believe me, That's I started calling myself the Cat Mountain expert long before I really was the Cat Mountain expert. <laughs> Dude, but there's I a crazy up. there's a crazy study on that by Carnegie Mellon that says basically the um, displaying of confidence is so much more influential to that prospective buyer than the actual results. So if you want to display yourself, if you have the confidence to carry yourself as the expert in that community, it will be so much more effective than the person beside you just displaying their actual real results. Isn't that crazy? That's How the awesome. human the human actually trusts the person who's confident right, more yeah. than the person who has facts because of just the way I guess yeah, we're just wired that way. Yeah. Um, I will yeah. say this to everybody, like all the real estate agents listening to this, man, you have an amazing opportunity right now. Because the average homeowner is sitting on so much potential equity. And there's a lot of people out there that they're ready to downsize. They're ready to sell that investment property. They're, I know this because I talk to agents all day long. Mm. But you can't just sit on your butt and mope about the current inventory. Like you literally pick up that phone and start getting after this these communities and literally share with them how you can help them, educate them. If you want to use Kevin's model, educate them on their potential, their options right now. Because I know even for my own brother and his real estate business, he's picking up a lot of deals from people who own second properties, right? Because they, they're ready to get out of the game, that type of idea. And he's picking up deals, just calling people that way. So it's, yeah, I mean, a right. huge opportunity. And, and, and the market is so hot. I'll give you an example. A colleague of mine, she's not with All City, but I know her really well. And she's a, she's a great agent. Um, she had a listing that just closed a couple of weeks ago. And it sort of became famous in the local Austin real estate community because the house was listed at $370,000. And it was in a neighborhood of homes, you know, from maybe 300 to a million, right? And they put it on the market at 370. And within a few days, they had 96 offers. Oh my God. And when the property closed, it, it became even more famous because the winning offer that ended up closing on that $370,000 home, they closed it at $540,000. It went for $170,000 over list price. So you want to talk about, and think about those other 95 buyers agents yeah. who didn't get the house, <laughs> right? That's what I'm talking about. Listing centric is the number one way Dude. for you yep. as an agent to maintain or increase your income in 2021 period yeah. yeah educate educate your audience like steven has a postcard going out and the headline is literally and this is his personal story he's using his personal story he bought a home three years ago it's worth seventy thousand dollars more right now so he's going to make seventy thousand dollars more because he's selling that home and he, he's getting another home and his headline is literally i couldn't believe i made seventy thousand dollars off my home and i just got it three years ago <laughs> want to know what your home's worth like that's a mailer going out to his database, his farm area, and he's then going to go prospect and call that area and literally educate. Like, hey, this was my story. Yeah, you know, I would love to. You educate have to you realize that people don't know what you know. Yes. Whenever you are the industry expert and you know what's going on in the markets, not people. You think that people know and they'll come to you if they need something. They do not know. You have to go put it in front of them. Yeah. Well, well, that's a really, really very powerful statement that you just said, and I'll expound on it a little bit. People talk about the disruptors in the industry that are eroding agents' value proposition, right? Zillow, Redfin, Open Door. If you view those companies, and my company has even been mentioned in the disruptor arena. If you think that those companies are disruptors, you are the dinosaur. Mm. You are the dinosaur 
who's looking up at the meteor streaking across the <laughs> sky and marveling at its beauty, not realizing that the meteor is about to crash into you and you will go extinct unless you evolve. Those companies I just mentioned are not disruptors. They are a natural evolution of that plethora of information that's out there for consumers to digest that I talked about earlier. And if you are not keeping up with that type of industry progression, that type of evolution, you are the dinosaur. Mm. And those are the agents who are going to fail. And so creating a listing centric marketing model that like we just talked about where you use reminder media and, and their tools where you put all of your database into a CRM and create a drip campaign where every two weeks they're getting information that is valuable to them. In my newsletters, when I was in production, I never put fluff in there. I never put magnets or calendars or recipes. Statistics and branding is the way to become that listing centric broker. And I'm a, I'm a really, I firmly believe that. Mm. All right, Kevin. So you've got this, uh, you put your spectacles on. So that tells me you're in an introspective teaching mood. We want to pick your brain on, <laughs> we ask everyone who comes on the podcast, what are two to three things, daily habits that you've done in your business, maybe even growing kind of all city, what you're doing every single day to lead that team that have really led to your success? Well, on a personal level, I get up early every day and I make my bed every day and I put my house in order every day. And what that sets the tone for, for me for the rest of the day is to get my house in order when it comes to the other components of my life, my relationships, my business, the agents who count on me for not just broker support, but leadership. And what is leadership? To me, leadership is not showing you the way, it's doing it. And I'll give you an example. In our weekly uh, Facebook Live broadcast, our All City Facebook Live broadcast every Thursday at 1, um, I try to talk about something that will be impactful perhaps not just in your business life, but in your personal life as well. And the thing that I'm going to talk about this week is something that I've been ruminating on for the last several days. I'm going to call it your personal and business challenge for 2021. And what I'm going to encourage everyone who watches our broadcast on those Facebook Live broadcasts, and anyone can watch them. If you want to, you can watch it on my personal Facebook page, which just look up Kevin Patrick Scanlon, uh, and you feel free to watch. What we're going to talk about this week is this. In your life and in your business, do you come from a place of abundance? Do you offer of yourself on a moment-to-moment -moment daily basis every single day without the expectation of reciprocity. I mentioned that earlier, and it's a very important concept to me because I believe that if you give without the expectation of reciprocity, and oh, by the way, do all the other things correctly, right? Know your market, Yep. know all of the things that you must do to be a successful business person, but, but the 30,000 foot overriding umbrella that holds all that together is, Give of yourself without the expectation of reciprocity. And if you do that, if you help your clients achieve their goals and, and never give a single thought to the dollars behind of that potential relationship, the money will come, brother. Mm. The money will come. I, I love that. that. That's really yeah, yeah, I love that. And I, I just want to plug your your Facebook lives too, because I've watched a couple of them and they really draw me in. Yeah, they're they're entertaining because, and educational. <laughs> yeah, because you know what you're talking about. You have an opinion on these things and it's not scripted. Like you can just yeah, yeah. tell you're coming. You I'm sure you prepare and, and everything, obviously, but it doesn't feel 
like I'm watching something scripted, you feel like you're kind of in the middle of a conversation because yeah. <laughs> you do it with your business partner, right? He's off camera though. You know, on the he's off camera. You know, the funny part about my business partner is uh, he's an LA guy, and uh, he was a successful actor in Hollywood. Uh, if I told you what he's been in, you would recognize a couple of these things. Uh, he was also in a boy band when he was a teenager. <laughs> no and, and he doesn't want to be on film. <laughs> he, no, he hates it. He hates being on camera. And That's I hilarious. tease him about it all the time. That's I love crazy. That. All right, Kevin, final question. What would you go back and tell younger Kevin maybe before, maybe that kid coming out of high school before you go into bi biology school, <laughs> yeah. start traveling the world? What would you go back and tell younger Kev? I would tell younger Kevin – to not listen to what other people told me I should be doing in order to have the greatest chance of success. And, you know, I'm even talking about my parents, mm -hmm. right? And so there were things, there were dreams that I had that I put on hold to go to college right out of high school, right? Which I had no business doing because I was brought up in a very insulated, protective household. And I, you know, kind of went wild when I went to college. And what I should have been doing is chasing my other dreams. I didn't do that. And mm -hmm. so now what I've learned is I'm going to, to, to do the things that make me happy and I'm going to take trips many, many times every single year and I'm going to do things that are on my bucket list without worrying about what other people think or, or trying to please other people or be a human being or in this case a business person that they think I should be. I'll give you an example. Uh, Back when the George Floyd killing happened mm -hmm. last year, um, I felt like because I had built a platform in my Facebook live broadcasts and in just in the fact that I own a company with lots and lots of agents and I have a reach even beyond those agents, I felt like it was my duty as a human being to take those Facebook live broadcasts and do something that was risky mm -hmm. and I lost a couple of agents over this, believe it or not. And what I did was I brought on in, in I think the, maybe it was the first broadcast that we did this, uh, but it was a couple of weeks after George Floyd was murdered. I brought on two of my African-American um, partners in business. One of them is a team leader of ours. He's a broker associate in another market about an hour from Austin. And he's, he's black and his nephew uh, also runs a couple of our markets and I brought them on the Facebook live and I asked them the hard questions, you know, mm -hmm. about things like what, what are the conversations you have to have with your children that are different than my conversations. Wow. Right. And the following week I brought on a female African-American colleague of mine who I've known my entire 21 years in the business. And she's an absolute dynamo and she's the most giving beautiful person you could ever meet. And I asked her those same questions. Well, I got a lot of pushback for it. Hmm. So, but I'll tell you what, if you don't like it, you can leave all city because I'm going to do this because it's my duty to do so. If I can help and reach people and give them the message of, and this was one of the questions I asked all of those guests, what can I do as a white man to make a difference, to help, put an end to this divisiveness in our country. Hmm. And you can go back and look at it if you want. It's still up there. But that's an example of I'm going to do the thing that I'm passionate about and I believe is the right thing yeah. regardless of what other people think. That's great advice. It's so awesome. I love yeah. the, the you know, even the, the overarching princi principle of being unashamed about the truth that you believe in. And it's the hardest thing in life to do. Like, it is so hard to not live your life at the whim of other people's opinion, right? And, and just living out that truth that you truly believe in. And what it does also cause you to do in life, which is so powerful, is it makes you actually think about what you believe. Because when you actually have to step out and risk yourself, most of us don't ever step out of the comfort zone, don't ever step out of the shell to risk ourselves. But you have to actually, hey, do I actually believe this? Yeah. And it's kind of like in business, like you know, the Cortez mentality that they talk about. You got to burn, burn the, ships. the ships. 
because once you get there, then you're all in. But, you know, people are attracted to that type of authenticity. They're attracted to that type of passion. That's what really drives success. So that's awesome, man. Thanks for sharing. All right, Kevin. Thank you so much for coming on. Glad we got a chance to introduce our audience to you since we had gotten to know you already. Uh, before we close out here, let people know how they can learn more about All City, how they can find you uh, online, or how they can connect with you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I know this probably isn't the norm, but I'll, 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 I'll help and talk to anyone if they want to join All City or not, or if they just want information. You're welcome to call me on my mobile number. It's very easy to remember. It's 512-77-Kevin. Okay? Hmm. Uh, Love that. So, <laughs> and yeah, that, I stumbled upon that when I you're first kidding. got into real estate. That's it was fantastic. a huge from a marketing perspective. So you're welcome to call me. Uh, but to find out more about All City Real Estate, uh, simply log on to allcityagents.com, agents with an S on the end, allcityagents.com. Uh, it's a great uh, resource for information about All City. And if you're licensed in the state of Texas, or maybe even it's applicable to other states, um, there are also a few of our uh, educational videos that are on there as well. So um, I would encourage anybody who who feels like they'd like to reach out to do so and I'm an open book and I'm happy to help anybody uh, awesome. who's listening right now. And the Facebook page is Kevin Patrick Scanlon, right? Yes. yes. So, so Kevin Patrick Scanlon, last name is spelled S-C-A-N-L-A-N. Uh, feel free to log on to the Facebook live broadcast every Thursday at one o'clock. Uh, we're going to have a good one this Thursday. It's going to be super, super powerful. Awesome, awesome, man. Well, thank you again for coming on. Thank you all so much for listening. To dive deeper into this episode and get all of the links that we mentioned, you can head on over to staypaidpodcast.com. You can also get the video for this show. And if you're looking for ways to support the show, there's only two ways we ask you to do that. First is to head on over to Apple Podcast, leave a review and a comment just to let us know how we're doing. It does help the chart position. It we definitely talked about does. that yes. in the beginning of the show. And the best way is to share this episode with a friend. If you want to get hold of me or Luke, you can email us at podcast at remindermedia.com. You can also follow us on Instagram. We are at Stay Paid Podcast. For this episode of Stay Paid, I'm Joshua Stike. Guys, and I'm Luke Aker. Here's your action item from this. I thought it was such a great idea to take your logo, take your brand, and go ask of your friends, your past clients, and use that exercise. Use like Mercedes, use American Airlines, use Apple and show them, hey, what do you feel when you see these logos? And then say, what do you feel when you see your logo? And is it going to be the answer that you want? And then think about the action that Kevin did. He realized, I don't want to be known as a cheap brokerage, right? I don't want to be known as that. I want to be known as the education, the we empower agents. And so that will help you shift and make you understand, hey, what do I need to do from a marketing perspective to make sure my brand is representing what I want it to represent? Remember this, the difference between a top producer and a mediocre producer in every single industry Josh and I have worked in is top producers take action. Take action on that today.